All right, so now we can start putting together some textures for the wound on the arm. So I mentioned in the last video, when you're looking for references of wounds or gory imagery, if that makes you uneasy, if you search for fake wounds or prosthetic wounds or movie makeup or something like that, at least you, you know it's not real. We're actually not going to be looking at any of those though because they do look quite real and I don't want this video to be flagged. What we will look at instead are some images that I found here. And this is the collection of stuff that we could use for more of a gory type of scene. So let's start here with some raw meat. So you can, this gives you a lot of nice texture information. We're not really as concerned about the color. So even if we just make this grayscale, we can still get a lot of nice detail here, like all of the little sinews and stuff like that. That's really useful. This is also, this is pomegranate. We get some really nice textures there, very rough. This is plaster, so plaster is actually really good, especially this one. We turn the color back on. We could actually use this coloring as well. I, I quite like how it goes from this kind of deeper, more saturated red into a very, very light, almost white red. We use that as well. And then we also have some vein maps. So some of these are, are quite easy to integrate. So some of these are just some squiggly lines, which is quite good. Some of them are trees. Like this one is just tree branches. And this one is a city. It's like some kind of, I don't know, traffic diagram, or I don't really know what that is, but it's some kind of map of some kind of city. Then we have some fractal patterns that are quite useful. We can create some of these in After Effects, but having some images that we can just drag in is quite useful. Now, here's my favorite part, and this was an idea I had for some visual effects shot for Westworld for HBO. I think the shot actually got cut, but uh, it was some kind of head wound where some guy's head was like smashed open and... They wanted it to be quite gory, so I was trying to find some references, and one thing I searched for was crushed fruit. This is like strawberries, and this is the image I used for my example. Uh, you can also do kind of this kind of stuff, quite disgusting looking, and like crushed raspberries and things like that. So these are really good ideas to look for, and they're pretty safe images to, to Google, but you can make them look pretty disgusting. I'm going to just drag this window off here, and let's pull some of these into After Effects. All right, so I grabbed a bunch of different textures that we can start using. And anytime you do this in After Effects, one idea is just make a new folder and just call it textures, and then just grab all the textures and add them to this folder. And the first thing that we're gonna do is just make a new solid. We're gonna call this like arm infection or wound or whatever it is that you're making. As I said in the previous video, you don't need to make something that is disgusting to make this a cool visual effect shot, but uh, that's what I'm going to be demonstrating right now. Let's just put this above just the plates right now, and then we're going to pre-comp this. And then everything that we do is going to be inside this pre-comp. So I'm going to lock the current comp, double click the arm wound comp, drag this over to the side so we can work inside the arm wound comp and then see the results. I can get rid of this solid here, and then I'm going to start dragging in some textures. So uh, let's actually start with this plaster one. So this is covering the entire plate, obviously. Uh, that's not what I want. So I'm going to go back to the arm wound. I'm going to take a copy of the plates, control C, and then just go back to the arm wound comp, paste these in. So what I did in one of the previous videos is take a copy of the plates and then just set it to a guide layer. So then we have a reference inside this comp of where everything is placed. And then we can still see the result at the side, but it'll just make our life a little bit easier. What we want to do at this point is just reposition this. We can leave the scale where it is, but what we want to do is just kind of mask off a region that we want to include. So what I would recommend when you're trying to determine this, remember that at the beginning, the entire wound has to be covered by the gauze pad. Another thing is that you shouldn't make your effect go all the way around the arm, because if you want to do that, you're going to either need to map this in 3D, like go into Maya, model an arm, and actually put this texture over the arm so you get the realistic curvature, or you're going to have to use a mesh warp effect. And mesh warp in After Effects is one of the worst effects, in my opinion, for controlling. This is very, very difficult. So we're just going to grab a pen tool, and then we're just going to mask out an area around the center of the arm. Then I'm going to hold down the Alt key, convert this point to a Bezier point. I'm not going to bother making a mat for this because we're going to have so many different textures on here. I don't want to have a bunch of mats that go with them, especially if I'm quite happy with this texture. And I, I like this texture, so I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to feather this, and then we're going to need to go into the mask expansion. So just double click mask one, and then lower this down quite a bit. I do something more like that. That'll be good for right now. Instead of using a mat of just the roto, I want to use a luminance map 
to kind of break up this texture a little bit. So let's go add a new solid. And this is actually going to be our base texture. Let's call that base texture mat. Okay, turn this off. I'm going to rename this texture as well. All right, so then what we're going to do, we're going to grab a fractal noise effect. I'm going to turn this layer on just so we can see the pattern. And there are lots of different types of fractal noise effects here. Uh, ones that I've used quite a lot are like the dynamic one. If I want something to look kind of smoky or, or cloudy, I quite like this one. Uh, but you could also make it look like there's like pimples or bulges in the skin or something like that. We can use that type of effect for that. But for this, all I want is to kind of break up the, the texture of that plaster and make it more like stringy or, or uh, I think there is one called strings. Uh, this one is not really what I want. I think uh, maybe that one's interesting. Just go through these, see what you like. Swirly is quite interesting, I think. Smearing this is the one. Oh, yeah, this is one that kind of has like uh, curly lines that have nice fractal textures to them. Then we can go open up the transform and the scale. We will want to pull the scale down. We get a lot more of that texture. Next, we're going to grab a curves effect. You can use the brightness and contrast controls within the fractal noise, but I prefer to do it with the curves. Just makes it a little bit more obvious that you're using color correction, and curves is just a lot easier to control in my opinion. So I'm going to do something like that. Then we're going to take this base texture, change the track map to a Luma Inverted. You can also do Luma. It just depends on what you're wanting here. Luma Inverted here is going to allow, this is a bit more black, so I want it to go in the black areas. So something like that. But what we've done is broken up that texture so it's not quite so, so harsh. I'll pull this down a little bit more, add a bit more contrast there. And then what you can do is go back to your base texture and just play around with matte edge a little bit there and, and something like that will be quite useful. Let's go back to our base texture, grab a curves, we'll change the red channel here, pull up the red channel just a little bit, a bit more saturated, but then I'm going to darken down the values. You can see that looks a lot better now on the plate. We'll pull down the highlights as well. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to grab that crushed fruit texture. So this crushed fruit HD, grab this in. This is massive. Click S for scale, pull this all the way down. Whoops. I just want to set this kind of towards the center. And for this, we're going to grab a pen. And then we're just going to just trace around the red parts of this image. It's very rough. It does not need to be accurate at all. We're just trying to have something that we can kind of blend off and not just have a hard edge. I'm going to make it a little bit more interesting. You can always use like rough and edges or something, but let's feather this up a bit. Something like that. And then we're going to grab another solid and use this for our mat. Same thing, we're going to grab a fractal noise effect. I quite like that smeary texture, but I'm going to leave the scale higher on this one. Then grab a curves again and just crush this in. And we'll like that. And then we can take crushed fruit and then set it to Luma Inverted. So then we have some kind of interesting texture here, but if we want to preserve the center and make that like a lot more prominent, what you can do on the crushed fruit mat, just go ahead and make kind of a selection around the parts that you want to keep. I think maybe like that. And then change the mask to be subtractive. So if we look at this mat as it is, we're just making it empty so this is cut out, so that mat is not actually being used at this point. And then we'd want to feather this as well. So that kind of blends in. So I think that looks that looks quite interesting. So on this particular texture, if we double click this fruit and just have a look at the original texture, we get a lot of natural shading around parts of the fruit here, which this is great for us because now we already have some depth in this image and we can make we can use this to our advantage. And if we look on ours, how we've integrated this, if we take this, if we add a bit more of that back in, that kind of shading around here, it's going to help us kind of integrate this just a little bit better, make it a little bit darker around the edges here. But uh, if you don't have something that has natural shading in it, you can just create a new solid and then go and manually add that back in yourself. So we can go into a new solid. I'm just call this like shadows. And if we look at the plate, the light direction is coming from either like overhead, but it's kind of more screen right than screen left. 
So our shadows really need to be more on this side. Uh, this side is also good. This is going to make it look like it's deeper, but we're also going to want some shading on this side as well. So right here, I'm just going to start making in some rough mask positions here. Something like that. We'll turn this layer on. And then we'll want to feather this a lot. More like that. This for now. And then if we want this to be made a little bit deeper, we can do the same thing around this edge as well. And now with just a few masks there, we've kind of made this center piece stick out a little bit more and it makes it look like there is more depth around here. Now we obviously have quite a bit of work to do on this, so let's just power forward. I'm going to go back to our crushed fruit, grab a curves, and now what I want to do is just, I'm going to lift all the shadows up a little bit. If we look on the left hand side, the shadows are really really dark, so I want to pull these up so they're not quite as dark. So it looks a little bit lifted here, but it's going to look much better in here. We'll go to the red channel, and I'm going to just pull out some of the highlights on the red, kind of darken that down, and we can see how much of a difference that makes here. So another problem I often see is red values are way, way too bright and saturated. So you want to have that looking a lot darker. Go to the blue channel here, and then we're just going to add just a bit of blue into this to the midtones. So with just some color correction, we've blended this in a bit better. Now throughout this, you might see me just going back to certain areas and just tweaking some of the effects. For example, on this one, I want to feather this out a little bit more so it kind of, it's a little bit too sharp. And then we're just going to pull in the, the mask expansion just a bit to smooth out that edge. That looks fine. Pull out some of these. Something like that's pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to go back to our main comp, and what I've just realized is I called this main comp arm wound, and then this is arm wound comp, so let's actually just rename this one just to be wound, and so we can differentiate that a little bit better. And on top of this, I'm going to put an effect that's going to kind of make this entire effect look a little bit more 3D. I'm going to put a CC glass effect on this comp. So CC glass is a way that you can kind of add like material properties to a layer and it has like kind of a, a displacement type of effect. If we pull this on here, it kind of makes everything look like it just bulges from the edges and it makes it not look as detailed as it was before. These highlights here are just way too sharp. It kind of blurs that out and it also gives you like a very interesting looking surface. If we go into the bump map under surface here, you can choose to find a different bump map. For us, since we want this effect on the comp itself, we're just going to leave that on the comp, but you do have the option to use another layer just to add more detail to something. And the displacement here, this is, this is the amount. If you increase this quite a bit, you can get very, very different looking effects. That looks a bit odd, but notice how the light kind of wraps around it. And it, the light is going to make this look a little bit more 3D. Now you can also go the opposite way and this is another really cool effect as well. If you have negative displacement, it kind of makes it look like there's now holes in the skin. So this is a really, really cool one. Kind of looks like it's like muscle or something. But the idea of this was to make some kind of like alien looking type of infection, not something super realistic. And this kind of has a very eerie alien vibe to it. Let's go into the light tab. And there's different types of lights that you can add. Like you can add after Effects lights here, and then you can control this effect with After Effects lights if you change it to that. You can change the light color as well. If you wanted the highlights to be less red and that's how you wanted to do your color correction, you can just do it with the light color, something more like that, or you can do something very, very weird, some kind of like bluish color. I actually kind of like that. You can color correct this to do more or less the same thing, but that's quite cool. It just depends on what you want to do. You can also control the height of the light so as you increase this, it's going to get brighter. As you lower the height, it gets a bit darker. So I think, I can't remember what that was at, but let's just do a value of around like 50 or something. You can also open up shading, and since this is considered more of a 3D type of effect, you get a lot of shading information as well. So we have things like your specularity, ambience, so you can like pull this up if you want it to be brighter. Uh, diffuse, 
So for hours, these aren't really going to do an awful lot, but you can play around with them if you want. Also, there's, I forgot to mention, there's the light direction. So if you want to change the light source direction, you can just pull this around and it will change. I think for us, we'll do something like, let's see, we want it kind of coming in at this angle. So maybe like 25. I think if I pull this up, it will be a little easier to see how this is being manipulated. And then this plays into the, the height as well. If you lower the height, you can see it kind of spinning around there. Maybe a value of around 60 is good. And the height will do something like put that back to 50. And then I will actually change this light color back to where it was. Maybe more like that. Looks a little bit better. So now we're getting some pretty interesting looking result here. And I don't need to see two of these because we're working in the main comp as it is. So at this point, we probably want to start integrating the, the roto. So for the gauze pad roto, I'm going to drag this layer right on top of the wound and change the wound comp track mat to be alpha inverted. And that's going to cut that off. And we can see how this is going to actually hide it. We need to kind of feather that edge a little bit. Oh, we also need to extend this out a bit more. It's going to be lots of technical fixes that we see throughout this. Okay, let's go back into the wound. And I want to kind of expand this area out a little bit more. I'm going to grab another solid. I'll put this underneath the shadows layer. Just a ring, basically what it's going to be. Change our mask to an ellipse. And drag out an ellipse. Hold down the control key and the shift key to make this more circular. Drag this there. I will just kind of make some curvy edges here. Just move these busy ape handles just so it's not perfectly circular. I'll put that there. Now what I want to do for this, I'm going to duplicate mask one and then mask two, I'm going to set it to be subtracted. What you can do now is open these up and if you increase the feathering of mask one, you kind of get that ring, like an edge that goes out. And we can do the same thing on mask two as well. Kind of makes it look like it's a bit more built up. I'll actually pull these edges in a bit more. You know, it's similar to the shadow that we just did. On the base texture, I will just pull this out a little bit more on this side so we can expand that out. I think I'm also just going to reduce the feathering and then reduce or increase some of the expansion. That can go out just a little bit more. These shadows are getting a little bit dark, so let's go back up to the shadows layer. And I'm just going to click T and just lower the global opacity. Then I'm just going to increase the displacement a bit more on this effect as well. So now what we need is something to kind of bridge the gap between this kind of base texture and the center right here. There's some other type of texture that we can might even consider adding some like little vein areas, but we just need something to kind of go around the perimeter of this. So I'll take this pomegranate texture, go back to our arm wound comp. I'll just grab a pen tool and I just want to mask in an area around here where that texture can be visible. And then I'll take another one and just go around this center part. So this is where that texture really can't show up does not have to be super accurate or anything. We do want to make sure that doesn't blend in too much with the center of this. Then the center, this mask two, will be set to subtract. And then the pomegranate textures is going in between here. Now for right now, don't look at the color because the color is not working out at all. We can go to the masks and then just feather both of these. And then to blend in this, let's go into our mask two. And we'll just feather that. We actually don't want to feather this too much. I think like 10 pixels, that should be adequate. Now the colors are completely wrong, so we'll want to grab a curves effect. And we also probably want a hue and saturation, because I think this is a bit too saturated. But first we'll just knock down the saturation, and then we'll go to the blue channel. We'll add in a bit more blue. And actually, I think that's all we need. We could go into the red channel and just Actually, I think I think it looks pretty good. You could go completely opposite, actually, and just lower the red, and that actually makes it look a little bit more bruised. Something kind of like that. Looks pretty cool. 
Now this area is now not really, it's, it's too homogeneous. So we're going to do the same thing that we did in the previous one, add a new solid, and we'll make a new luma mat for the pomegranate texture. Grab a fractal noise effect. And for this one, I do want the scale to be a lot smaller, I think. Open up transform, we just crush that down a little bit. And then I just need to keep start playing around with this. So we'll set the, it doesn't matter if it's luma or inverted here. You can kind of see how this gives you kind of a cool effect as well if you were just to use a mat with the CC glass on the side. Go back to that smeary one. Subscale is pretty interesting. I think this is going to be too thick. Hold this down. To playing around with these blending modes, we get very interesting looking kind of, it makes it look like these are cuts into the skin, like deeper, deeper like, like crevices almost. So you'll just have to play around with this to come up with something that you like. You can also add a vector blur to this. Got some more like veiny looking areas. Go back to the pomegranate texture here and then just darken this down very slightly. Okay, we can feather this base texture out just a bit more. Because I don't want it. We're getting too many like white areas here. Pull in the mask expansion. And this actually, this looks like pretty good bruising because we have the different variations of color. It looks pretty good, but I do want to increase that just a little bit so we get kind of those wider areas. You you want it to make it look like the skin is actually inflamed or it's been roughed up a little bit. It's the center that's getting the brunt of it and it kind of like radiates out. And I think one thing I want to change here, um, I think I might actually just want to replace, like reposition this texture just a little bit. Because we have this mask on the texture, if we just move the entire layer, the mask move, moves with it. If we click Y or the track behind tool, we can just reposition the texture and then we can find something that just fits in just a little bit better. We can just play around with the overall position and then we might just get an area that we just like a little bit better. Now that actually looks pretty cool up there. I'm now deviating quite a bit from what I had before, but kind of like that texture. So you could play around with this literally all day and get new interesting kind of results. But I think what we need to do now is start adding some veins to this and then we can start integrating this a little bit better. So let's go over to the arm wound now. And I think it is time that we start seeing how this looks with some defocus to camera lens blur. Let's try value of around two and Keep in mind, if you were looking at like very, very fine detail and you really liked it, <laughs> remember, you need to see what it looks like when everything's defocused uh, because the, the focus does need to match. And I think that actually looks pretty good. I think that's a pretty good amount of defocus. Now we are getting like some macro detail here, of these larger areas, which we need to make sure we have. So that looks good. Pretty pleased with that. All right, so this looks pretty cool. Now let's actually start adding some veins to this. So some of these veins can animate and the idea of this, you, you wanna make it look visually interesting. So you wanna make sure that you, ha you have some kind of animation or some kind of progression going on. It can't just be static or just like lightly undulating. You want it to kind of move in frame. Veins are a really good way to do that. So I'm gonna add this marble texture, specifically like round here, I, I really like that texture. I'm going to actually invert this and then change the contrast. Pull down the brights. Hide some of these darker veins up there. Don't forget about the shift plus minus keys for cycling through blending modes in After Effects. It's very, very useful. Um, so you don't have to keep clicking the blending modes button. 
We get some pretty interesting ones here. This one would be pretty cool if you wanted it to make it look like there was a light underneath the surface. But this is more like what I'm looking for, some kind of overlay looking. We might even do soft light. I think overlay is going to be better for, for this specific one. Now, keep in mind, I do actually have to put this texture outside of the comp so it actually blends with the skin. If I were to copy this, let me turn this off, put this inside the wound comp and just paste it here, you can see inside this comp it looks great. But remember, in the actual composition, this arm wound is just a guide layer. So really, it's looking like this. And because this is a pre-comp, the blending mode by default is normal. And if you change the blending mode, you're in fact changing the blending mode of everything inside it. So it's really, you want to leave this on normal. Uh, you can also, sometimes you can click this uh, collapse transforms button to kind of preserve some blending modes, but it doesn't really work for everything. So let me just undo that. And we're going to go back to just having veins outside here. And I'm going to get rid of this main, main black vein there. I don't really want to include that. Put this underneath the wound so these veins can look like they're kind of radiating out from it. Then I'll want to feather this out a bit more. If you wanted to make it look like the, the, the veins are going like deeper into the skin, you definitely need to have quite a bit of feathering. And it, we're not really using an awful lot of that texture. We're just, uh, it's just adding a little bit extra detail. So we could have a few of these. We have a couple of these, and I'll just do the same treatment on both. To get rid of these sharp edges, I'm making two additional masks, and I'm going to subtract them. So this is looking pretty interesting now. Um, a lot of this is just tweaking constantly a bunch of times until you get something that you're you're happy with. I think I actually I'm gonna just add just a bit of red into these as well. But the more components that you have, the cooler the visual effects shot is gonna look, and the more things you have to animate, so it's gonna make it look a little bit more you know, look a little bit cooler. So I would imagine this to be kind of like the end result of these. At the very beginning, when we first see it, we're not gonna see quite as much of this wound. That this part can be quite built up. We could expand the edges very slightly. We can also have these kind of grow out, and that would be pretty cool. So there's several different techniques that we can use to kind of grow veins. Now, if you just want like little tiny veins like this to kind of just follow like a general mask, it's very easy to do. But if you want larger veins that are following a very specific route, a little bit more complicated. But before we actually do any more work here, we're going to need to track this to the arm. I'm going to take all of these layers and just attach them to the wound comp. And then I'm going to attach the wound comp. You can do this either with the pick whip or the parent link menu. I'm going to add all of these to skin track. So skin track is what's going to allow this to move with the skin. You can see it's moving with the skin. Uh, now it does move off to the side very slightly as the hand comes over, so we'll need to address that. Let's just take a copy of the gauze pad roto, and we're going to paste it above each one of these. Take these textures and set them to alpha inverted. We definitely need to fix some of this roto here. I thought I'd finished all of that, but I guess I left out a little bit. We're going to have to go back and add more into that in a bit. We're also going to want to add a camera lens blur to all of these elements as well. Do a value of two, copy that layer, and then just paste it on these. Kind of blends in a little bit better. So these veins here are going to be underneath the skin. We want some larger ones are on top of the skin. And for that, I'm going to use this urban flow map. I'll put this on top here. I'll drag this off to the side. Let me just rotate this. 
And we need to extract out the white part here. So we can either use a Luma key or we can just use an extract effect. Let's just get rid of all of this white. We're going to be blurring this and we'll be adding some other effects on it. So it's not going to look quite as bad. Set this to be subtracted and this will be fine for right now. I think I, I will actually feather this, then just feather it just a little bit. Kind of blends into the skin. All right, so to make this not look quite so harsh, I'm gonna add in a fractal noise effect. This is gonna fill in just inside the veins. We'll make the scale a bit smaller, actually quite a bit smaller, like 20. And one cool thing that you can do to make it look like the veins are actually kind of like pumping like blood or some kind of like liquid through them, you can just animate the offset. So this is basically how I got it to make it look like it was kind of pushing out some liquid. So because the veins on the left side have to be going one way, we will have to cut out this section. So we're not actually going to see any of this after all. Um, what we can do though is just animate it and then flip it then flip the mask if we need to. So what we can do, take this offset cert turbulence and just like place a position kind of here. And then we can animate this probably, um, can do this maybe from around frame 80. We'll keyframe it and go forward until the very end and then just move this over. So this will kind of dictate our speed. something kind of like that. Now we will have to trim this part off so we can just grab another mask and uh, we can just take a very large section of this off. Subtract this. We don't really need to worry about feathering this one. I think we're not actually going to use this part anyway. So that's the, the main flow of the particles going through it. But what we really want is to animate the entire veins coming out. So we'll do a right on effect. Okay, so we'll call this map kind of just veins left. And then we'll make a solid for this. We'll call this veins left mat. And on this one, we want the right on effect. And then change the paint style to on transparent. Change the brush position, something around there. Then we can increase the brush size up quite a bit so you can see it. And then you want to make sure that you have your brush time property set to size and hardness. And then we'll go to frame 80 again. Or actually, we could start. It just depends how much you want this to have revealed by this time. And then we'll do brush position, keyframe that. And then we'll go forward to frame 110 and then just drag this out. Now, the more accurate that you want this to be, the more precise you'll have to be with your keyframes and the position. But you can do a pretty rough job just by making your brush size large enough to encompass the entire vein. And right now, I'm just arbitrarily doing this every 20 frames. So basically, we just have this line following it. This will end up being an alpha mat for the layer underneath. Now right here, I'll pull this up a bit more and reposition this. This is kind of like the Growing Vines video that I have, which I released several months ago. It's basically the same idea. And I think we might want to take all these keyframes and just scale them out. So select them all, hold down Alt, and you can just drag these out. So they'll go towards the end of the shot. Now, you can't have multiple write on effects that use on transparent. So, what we're going to do is to say original image. So, just turn this one off and then grab a new one. And we're just using on transparent just so we can see what we're doing, but we'll need to set those to on original image in a moment. And we'll drag that up, have that start there. Remember to change the brush time properties to size and hardness and keyframe brush position. Try to make your distance pretty consistent as you space your keyframes. So if you space your keyframes pretty equidistantly, try to do the, the spacing the same as well. That moves about the same amount. And we could have that go down as well with another write-on effect. The more write-on effects you, you have, the 
more time consuming it is, but it does make it look more intricate and more interesting. I'll just start this one down here. Turn this one back on, so around frame 130, this can begin coming off. So at this point I want to make the brush size a bit smaller, so I'll come forward, change the brush size here, and then I'll lower that. Otherwise we'll start adding in too many of these veins as well. Okay, cool. Alright, so now we can turn all of these on, and then change the mode or the style here to be on original image, and then you can have as many right on effects as you want. So change veins left here to use that as a luma mat and then that's basically how you can get your veins to, to come out and it makes it look like there's liquid inside there as well moving forward all right let's do some color correction to the veins we'll also switch that to an overlay blending mode So we're going to need a couple copies of both of these layers. So we're going to pre-comp this one. We'll move all attributes. So if we need to change the mat at all, we don't have to change it several times. All right, so we'll grab a drop shadow effect. This is going to make it look like it is casting a shadow just on one side. And you can increase the softness of the shadow as well. So the further that shadow is away from the object, the thicker it's going to look. We're also going to want to add a camera lens blur to this. We'll just do a value, I think actually for this, since it already looks pretty out of focus, for right now we'll just do a value of 1. Alright, so what I'd like to do now is use another CC glass effect to kind of give this some height. It's going to reshade it and it's going to make it look like it's more like flowing on the surface. So for that, we're going to take both of these veins and then we're going to pre-compose these together. Move all attributes, and then for this we'll just reset that back to overlay. I'm going to grab a new adjustment layer. Let's call this veins left displace, and then grab a CC glass effect. Now the adjustment layer is going to affect everything beneath it. Which is why when we add that, we get the effect on everything. Instead, what we want to use for the bump map, we just want to use the veins left comp. And then for the property, we want to use alpha. We'll say effects masks, pull down the softness quite a bit, and kind of see what that's doing. We pull that down to one, the height down as well. So on the softness here, we'll just do something like, it can actually be pretty soft, 10 or so. Something around that, it looks pretty good. But this makes it this look like it's risen off the surface. We also change the light direction again. We want to grab our veins left comp and we probably just want to blur this a little bit more, specifically on this edge. So I'll double click the veins left comp, drag our other comp window open here. I'm actually going to take this camera lens blur effect and I'm going to take this off and I'm going to paste this on the outside because at the end we'll probably want to adjust those uh, without having to go inside all of these comps. Instead, inside, I'll add a fast box blur. This after the drop shadow, doing like a value of maybe even just 0.5 would be enough just to soften that edge. And then on the veins left comp, we can just do some extra color correction before the camera lens blur and darken down those veins a bit. And I think they're also a little bit saturated. We can grab a hue and saturation, lower the saturation, and then it's just a case of playing around with the veins displacement. Something like that would probably work pretty well. And then one last thing, I'm going to make a duplicate of this veins comp. Re rename this to be shadow. We can get rid of our hue and saturation, get rid of the curves. Uh, we can actually just get rid of all the effects and then change the blending mode back to normal. Instead of what we want to do is grab a fast box blur. And uh, actually we might need that curves. We only really care about the dark value, so let's crush that down a bit. 
And basically all we want to do here is just blur this. So we get kind of like a, a platform for this to, to rest on. And the next thing is I want to go back to the veins left displace layer and just play around with the surface attributes. I'm trying to get something that allows the highlight to be a little bit more prominent. And the, the sharper the highlight, the more this will look like it's actually raised up on the skin because right now it's just kind of blending in. A higher displacement value is going to be a little bit better. All right, so this is what we have so far. And this is looking all right. Uh, there's some areas that I think I might want to just like sharpen up. It might be a little bit too thick in places. So if you did want to make everything just a little bit thinner, something that you could consider is going into your veins comp. You can go to your urban flow map here. You could add a simple choker to it. So you would add the simple choker right after you do your extract. And by choking this in just a little bit, like a value of 0.5, I'm going to make it a bit thinner. Now you might lose some of this detail in the center that it will tighten up the veins. It just depends how thick you want them to go. Pretty happy with this. All right, so what we can do now, um, there's a couple things. The inside, like these little particles inside are getting a little bit too dark for my liking. You would change that by going into your urban flow map and on this fractal noise, so if I just solo this, on this fractal noise, the brightness, you could just boost the brightness. And by boosting the brightness, basically, you're going to make the entire vein look a bit brighter. So we might have to go back now into veins left comp, and then we might just have to darken that down a little bit. Maybe get rid of that. Pull some of the bright areas down just a tad. You can, again, play around with this forever, but that's how you would control that. So the very last thing I wanted to do, before I do the same thing on the other side, I want to play around with these smaller veins. We could get this to, to animate outwards as well, really easily. Because we're already using Roto for the gauze pad, what I'm going to do is just select this layer and I'm going to grab a rectangular mask. I'm just going to do something pretty simple. Drag this over. And because we already have several masks on here, I'm going to rename this mask to be Expansion. Let's click Enter and then you can, re you can type in the name. But we're going to change the type to intersect. So intersect allows you to use different blending modes above, like we have lots of add, we have an add mask and then several subtracted masks. But the intersect is going to just show you kind of in the middle. And all we're going to do is, it's very simple, I'm going to take this mask, it's going to start here, and then let's go to frame, start this at frame 100. I'm going to keyframe the mask path, and then by the end here, by let's say 190, this can have gone out the full length. We will need to feather that, or we can just use the roughen edges. So I'll put the roughen edges before the camera lens blur, and we want to increase the border quite a bit. Let's solo this layer so we can see exactly what it's doing. Probably want to turn the sharpness down, and then the scale, we can actually increase the scale quite a bit. And then actually, let's let's go ahead and lower that border. We'll add just a simple time expression to the evolution. So it expands kind of like that. And then what we'll probably want to do here, pull this out quite a lot so that border isn't going to get in the way. Unsolo this. And then we get the veins to kind of all appear like that. Now we could we could slow this down a little bit. Just reposition these so this can actually go all the way to the end. And this maybe not might not start until these veins, these larger veins have come out a little bit more. Maybe these can have a little bit of a lead. Turn these off. Let's do like an easy ease. F9. F9. Alright, so right now we get something like this. I think this is going to look pretty cool. So you would have to do the same thing on the other side as well. I'm not going to show that in the video, but I will go ahead and just work on that so we can see how the overall thing is looking. 
All right, so I finished up the right-hand side of the veins in terms of the animation and adding in the CC glass of the, the main veins. I also added a hand to the gauze pad roto. It's kind of a rough area just because uh, I forgot about that. So now the roto is a lot better than it was before. So this is what we've got so far. Anyway, what we have here though is a lot of copies of this gauze pad roto mat. What I want to do is select all of these gauze pad rotos, and I just want to change the color of them. So it's a little bit easier to pick out the the elements and and then the roto. So if we just click on the side here, one of the color swatches, we could make all the roto just like dark green for the roto, so it's easier to pick out the rest. So make sure you have this gauze pad roto comp. Make sure that you put it above every single element. All right, so in terms of the overall brightness of this, I think we're, we're losing some highlights that would really play to our advantage. I'm going to go back to the wound comp and then I am going to change that light color to a much brighter value. Still maintaining a little bit of that green tint, but I need the highlights to be brighter. So some other tweaks that we can do, if we look at the coloration of this main effect, I'm going to grab a curves. I'm going to add just a bit more contrast to this, very slightly. Um, another thing is, if we look at the gauze pad here, it's looking very flat in terms of this, the color. There's no differentiation in color. So what you need to do is go into the gauze pad back, and then we need to add to some kind of different color in the center. And for that, we could bring in this crushed fruit thing here. See where it's kind of like yellowy here. I'm just going to grab a new solid. I'm going to use the same technique that we used before on that base texture. And even just doing something as simple as that kind of adds a little bit more color into this. I'm going to grab a pen tool to kind of mask in this area. Don't forget to feather it. Alternatively, you could just play around with blending modes. And even something as simple as adding this adds a little bit more texture detail here. So. If this is looking pretty flat without it. And then adding that back in just adds a bit more depth. Now, there's a million things that you could do with this. I'm, I kind of liked where it was before. Actually, that's a pretty interesting looking effect as well right there. In fact, what we could do, we could duplicate this again. And on one of these, it could be normal if we just take out that center part. Yeah, I quite like that. I think that looks a little bit more interesting. I'll just lower the opacity of the other stuff to make it not go quite as dark. A couple more things that we can do to make this a little bit more interesting. In the center on this wound comp here, what we could do, we could animate the displacement. So it makes it look like these parts inside are either undulating or growing in size. We could also make it look like they're kind of breathing in and out, which I think would be pretty cool. So let's actually, let's do that. Let's go to probably around frame 90. Keyframe of position there, and then let's say at 110, it goes up to 100. Or maybe let's go like 150, 125, something around there. And then it can go back down to about 70. We can just copy these keyframes here, paste these in. I think we're actually going to take all these keyframes though and uh, just ease them. All right, so right now what we have is just some like undulation, kind of breathing in and breathing out. It's kind of subtle. I think it will be enough to kind of give that effect. So one other thing that we can do on this, the centerpiece is add a turbulent displacement effect. So let's go inside our comp, drag this over, and this needs to go just on this inner layer. Get down to crushed fruit, grab a turbulent displace effect, hold down alt, click on the stopwatch for evolution. Add a time expression. We'll do a size of maybe around 50. Uh, we actually need to keep an eye on the left hand side here because this one also has a CC glass. So maybe you can see how that's undulating. So let's see how this looks in the main comp. All right, so we've got some undulation here and I think this is gonna look pretty good. I'm gonna go into the wound comp here, let's go into the green channel and just add just a tiny amount of green. There's a bit of green here on the skin. I wanna just kind of add that in. We do the same thing with the veins, but there's a lot of little minor adjustments that we can make. Uh, overall though, this is a little bit 
smaller than the example that I had. So if you wanted to just scale this up, you would want to go into all the comps and scale it up in the comps, and then everything would be fine. But then you'd have to go ahead and then reposition all the veins. But I think for this, I think it's okay just to demonstrate the idea. It's a little bit different than the one I had. I think the, the biggest thing is the veins are a little bit sharp. We need to go into the veins displays layers. I'm going to add just a bit of softness to the CC glass on the veins there to soften up the highlight. All right, so in the next video, we're going to wrap up this effect and we're going to kind of point out areas that would need a little bit of extra work. And then after that, I'm going to do a supplemental video, which is just going to be in Maya exploring some paint effects if you'd like to add a 3D aspect to this piece. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.